Hi, everyone. Welcome to our Home Exchange webinar. If you're just joining us, please, on the chat, enter your name and where you're from. And letting you all know that this event will be recorded. So once we have everyone kind of mention their name and where they're from around the country or world, we'll get started. We also wanna let you know, if you look at the screen right here, there are two different buttons on uh, the right-hand side. There's the question button and there's the chat button. So right now, please use the chat button to say your name and where you're from. But if you have any questions throughout the webinar, please enter them in the questions button and we will be sure they are answered either live or afterwards we'll follow up with you via email. All right, great. And again, this is recorded so you can reference this great webinar afterwards and let's get started. So, so nice to meet all of you. My name is Shannon. I am the on part of the West Coast marketing team for Home Exchange. I am based in San Francisco. I am an avid traveler, a big foodie, and I'm a mom of two teens. And our family loves to travel like a local. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Clem, and I've been at Home Exchange uh, working uh, for the marketing department for the past five years. Uh, when I first joined the company, I also decided to start traveling with Home Exchange. Uh, I have two young children, a dog. And it took some convincing with my husband, uh, but after doing completing our first exchange, he was completely sold. And we've been to many places in the States, uh, in Europe as well. And we've hosted people from France, Canada, uh, and Americans as well. So we really love the concept. And I'm so delighted today to do this webinar uh, with Angie, Chantal, and Preti. Uh, and so excited to have all of you here. So that's great. <laughs> Hi, I'm Angie, and we have been kind of obsessed with home exchanging um, for the past eight years. And we've done, I think we're on 121 swaps. So lots and lots. Um, we did a big one in New Zealand that had more seven weeks back to back, one, one week in each spot um, throughout New Zealand, all home exchanges. And we've done Bali and Costa Rica and Panama, Mexico, all over the U.S. It's been awesome. And my husband also was a little bit slow to convince, but it only took the first exchange. And then I was like, OK, yeah, actually, this is a great idea. Let's do this. So uh, it's been wonderful. My kids were not hard to convince at all. They loved it from the beginning. Um, yeah, and we have about five um, different countries we're planning to go to, mostly in Europe this summer. But we are also headed back to Bali next week. So all through Home Exchange this year. We're excited. Hi everyone, I am Preeti and our family is based in London. We moved here about six months ago um, from California in the US. And so we have been loving living here and also loving some new opportunities for home exchanges close to, close to home now. Um, we have done a number of exchanges, um, both short-term and long-term, and it has been amazing for our family. We have six kids, so especially with a big family, it has been really helpful to do exchanges to both save on costs so we don't need two different hotel rooms um, and to just give our kids a sense of home as we are traveling around. Um, like Shannon, we love traveling like locals and getting to know neighborhoods and other families and restaurants and grocery stores, all that kind of thing. So it has been a really fun experience for us. Hey guys, I'm Chantal, and we're known as Growing Up Without Borders on YouTube and social media. Um, we started on a crazy journey just to Europe for five weeks, and um, that was back in 2013. And since then, we've traveled to 141 countries, and we're on a mission to visit every country in the world with our three daughters. And they're right now uh, 
16, 18, 20, and when we started, they were five, seven, and nine. And so we discovered Home Exchange only in 2019. Oh. And I wish we would have known about it beforehand because it literally changed everything when it comes to traveling and traveling with a family. Um, we've done, again, I don't know how many, but over 100 in uh, over 25 countries. And so it's just been phenomenal. And um, yeah, it's changed our lives, <laughs> literally. Awesome. Thank you so much. Well, and combined, these three ladies have done over 300 exchanges. So very impressive. And they're a wealth of knowledge. Um, and we'll share more as we move forward with the webinar. So first of all, I'm sure many of you are here wondering, what is Home Exchange? How does it work? What What is it all about? So we're here to kind of break it down for you quickly. But just so you know, Home Exchange was established in 1992. So it's been around a long time. We are the number one home swapping community in the world. We have 270,000 homes in 145 countries. We also have over 150,000 active members and a very happy community of members uh, where we received a trust pilot rating of 4.7 out of five from over 3,200 reviews. So fantastic reviews all around. And it's just a place where you can travel with a peace of mind um, where we have guaranteed member support. Um, but in order for Home Exchange to work, it's really based on trust, mutual respect, and a lot of open communication, which you'll hear more about. So another thing that I think a lot of people are kind of confused about is what is Home Exchange and how is it different from other rental platforms, such as like an Airbnb? What are the main differences? Well, the main difference is that Home Exchange is not a rental platform. It is um, a community where you pay a one-time annual membership fee of $220, and then there's no other monetary exchange. That's it. <laughs> it's all, then you're swapping homes. So the, the only out-of-pocket cost that you're paying is that 220 annual membership. Um, we're a community versus a marketplace. We focus on building a community of like-minded travelers, versus rental platforms that are kind of operating off a marketplace um, to connect hosts and guests. And finally, with home exchange, there's less regulations and more tax advantages. You know, the informal and kind of non-commercial nature of home exchanges, it falls outside of some of the typical rental regulations and limited tax liability due to non-monetary exchange of services. So I know in some cities, you know, there's a lot of regulation um, for doing rentals, but we don't have that um, kind of uh, issue with home exchange. So those are kind of the three main differences, but there are more. 70% um, of home exchange homes are primary residences. So a lot of other rental platforms, some of them it's like a vacation home that they're renting out, but 70% of these homes are primary residences. Um, there isn't a kind of an instant booking option, how it happens on, say, like an Airbnb, there's a lot of interaction, messaging, and communication that you do with other members to kind of coordinate and exchange. But that's kind of the, the joy and, and beauty of it, right, is, is connecting with other people and, um, you know, figuring out if the certain dates and time are going to work. And this is how the, our community is built. Um, our members act as both hosts and guests. So not only are you being a host to have people stay in your own home, you're also being a guest in other people's homes. So it's really based again on trust and mutual respect. Um, and members are often discover hidden gems leading to really memorable adventures, um, staying at homes where you make connections with locals if you're you know, there. Um, you can see in this little uh, picture here, when you go into the Home Exchange website, you see a listing um, that top, you can see that number three, that shows how long um, a person has been a member with Home Exchange. And then you can see the rating that's kind of based off of people who've stayed in their homes. And then the last one is the number of points it takes to stay in their home. And we'll get into that further. So what, why does our community travel with us? People travel with Home Exchange because we save a huge amount of money on travel expenses. I mean, I think staying staying at a, anywhere is probably the most expensive cost when you're traveling. You also get to travel to more non-touristy destinations and really live like a local. Um, you get to experience authentic comfort in real homes that are actually equipped for families. 
And also you can have that peace of mind that someone is staying in your home. Potentially, if you have pets, they're taking care of your pets. They're taking care of your plants. This is all you know stuff that you communicate up front, but such a benefit to know that someone's in your home uh, taking good care of it. So how does it work? But you're wondering, well, there's a couple types of exchanges. So there's, first of all, there's the classic exchange. And this is where two families find each other on home exchange and say, hey, I'd like to go to San Francisco and I'd like to go stay in your home in Paris. And you swap at the same time, same dates, or it doesn't have to be in the exact same dates, but it's a reciprocal change uh, exchange. Um, the other way to do it is an exchange with guest points. And this is where if you find a member with available home, but the member doesn't want to stay in your home in return, which is fine, you can offer them guest points that they use to stay at another member's home in the destination of their choosing for the future. Um, so this, we'll, we'll go into more detail about guest points, but this is really, there's a lot of uh, guest points exchange to stay in people's homes. Uh, we also have something called hospitality exchanges. And this is um, where you can do an exchange just to say in like a private room or private part of someone's home. So any, I don't know if anyone wants to jump in to talk about. I will. All I right, will. let's move into. Yeah. I say real quick about the hospitality. Um, when we were in New Zealand, we were traveling and we needed like one night somewhere. And um, we didn't want to get a hotel. We didn't have to, but it's kind of hard to find a like reciprocal exchange for one night or whatever. And a family opened their home to us and we had the best time. And we still, eight years later, like stay in touch with them on social media and stuff. But they were the sweetest family, had kids around our age. They made us dinner. We just had like a great evening together and felt like we made brand new friends. So it was really sweet that they, you know, we didn't have points at that time either. And so they just were like, hey, just come and stay. And if we ever make it to Oregon, you know, we'll hit you up. But we might not, you know, <laughs> it's like, great. So that was fun. That's I would great. add to that as well on the platform when you're exchanging, some people are very business and it's all about, let's just do points and points. And then others are like what Angie experienced where sometimes people are like, just come or, or maybe you even extend and you're like, oh, I just, I'm going to extend for two more nights and we'll do it. And they're like, don't worry about it. You're like family now, you know? And then it's just like, you get this um, community that you wouldn't normally have on any other, any other platform. Right. So, yeah. That's great. That's great. And I know we kind of, I touched on this already, but you're probably wondering how much does this cost? So again, the cost is only for an annual membership, which costs $220 for the year. And after that, no additional money is exchanged. So I'm excited to announce right now for you attending this webinar, we're actually offering a special code. If you decide to sign up after the webinar um, by March 21st to become a member of Home Exchange, we're offering 20% off of that 220 annual membership with the code March 20. So keep that in mind. Um, so, uh, and here's an example too of a home that's available in April in Lake Tahoe, a beautiful home that you could coordinate and do an exchange with, which is just you know, incredible. So an example of once you start kind of exploring the site, you'll find some incredible homes that have available coming up, whether it's for spring break or summer or your, you know, fall plans. Shannon, if I just can yes. jump in here, I yes. just sharing from my own experience, I was talking, it took some convincing with my husband. So when we first signed up for home exchange, we organized our first exchange with points that we got when we registered. And we went to New Hampshire uh, for, I think it was a long weekend, four nights. And then by doing so, my husband kind of realized, whoa, this is cool. Like someone is hosting us for free and, and then we're gonna be able to do the same in return uh, to travel for free. And, but I think having that first experience of not having to host, but maybe using those free points kind of helped him to see what the community was all about and was really helpful. So that's why we always like to kind of, you know, mention this. If you have some fears at first, well, maybe organize your first exchange with points mm -hmm. and then you can see what it's all about. And then the next time you host to earn more points and you can continue to travel that way. That's great. So we'll add on. Great point. 
Can I jump in and answer Ben's please, question? Please, yes, yes. So Ben's asking um, his primary home has a Tesla and a pontoon boat, and how often do people um, exchange out that inform that those uh, valuable items and or is it risky if people are using guest points versus a direct exchange? So um, the beauty of home exchange is everything is customized to exactly how you want. So I've stayed in homes and they call it their Tessie and they're like, oh, you just can't use the Tessie. And not all the time, you don't have to always include your car. You don't have to exchange everything. Uh, you, you don't need to do that. So you don't have to exchange your boat. If you want to, you can. And it's completely up to you. If you've been speaking to the person back and forth and you feel comfortable, then you might want to offer it to them uh, or maybe not. So, yeah. That's great. That's, and I think just to continue on that, thanks Chantal for jumping on it. The car exchange, we get a lot of requests about this. It's not something that's facilitated through home exchange. Uh, but that being said, I know a lot of our members do it. Like Chantal, I think, or Angie, I know you've, I don't know if Pretty, you've done it and you want to share a couple of words about it. We've done it several times and it's always been great. And especially when we had kids with a car seat and even if they don't swap their car, I might ask if they have a car seat. <laughs> so we don't have to haul it. Um, so yeah, it's been really great. We've even had people leave it at the airport. In fact, our very first exchange, they included their car with the car seat and left the car at the airport with a hide a key. And we did the same and it was a direct reciprocal swap. And I was like, I'm sold. I don't even need to see their house. <laughs> we got a car with the car seat. <laughs> I'm sold. Your house was awesome too. But we have also exchanged a car and it was super helpful for like I remember that first one we did. My parents actually came and visited and they stayed with us also. Um the hosts were super nice and they're like, Yeah, that's totally fine if your parents come stay. So we were able to use a car to go pick up my parents from the airport. And so it's really convenient when it works out. That's amazing. So great. And again, you know, I think we've touched on this too, but how do you get guest points? Well, you really, you get guest points, first of all, by signing up and becoming a member and you get guest points by, you know, completing your profile, adding, adding a listing of your home, um, adding, you could be, you know, adding verification of your driver's license and just proof that, you know, of who you are, you get all these points. Um, additionally, you can get points by sh sharing the news about home exchange with friends who you think might be interested. You gain points that way. But primarily, you earn po points by hosting people in your home. Um, so, but again, as Clem mentioned, you don't need to, the uh, you get up approximately about 1,300 points just from signing up and going through the whole process. So you have enough at that point to go on your first exchange without hosting someone. Um, so that's a great benefit. If you're a little nervous about the concept and are having someone in your home, why don't you go to someone else's home first, experience it, and then from there, I think it's you know every everyone's hooked after that. But um, that's that's how you get guest points. Shannon, can I just jump yeah. in? Because I see more yes, questions around the guest points, and I feel like it's please. just going yes. live off script might be great, but. Um, I see um, Amanda, for instance, noticed that many listings state no guest points. Uh, I see Ben, you've you've seen on Reddit that it's not always easy to use guest points. Before I respond, I don't know, Angie, Shanta, and Pretty, if you want to share your experience of yourself using guest points. I the answer, but I, don't know. <laughs> I I've used a lot of guest points and. Um, I don't find it hard to spend my guest points at all. I, I always have people willing to accept guest points. I've never had that be a problem. I do have find homes that say no guest points. And I think that typically these homes are, um, I guess maybe more on the luxury end of things and they want a home that's also kind of a luxury home um, or they're just really high popular destinations like Hawaii, for example. Sometimes they'll say no guest points because they want to rent their home whenever they can. It's like an Airbnb for them, a second home more often, and they might rent it. And then they want just a direct swap for them to come. They're looking really for an exchange in a particular location at a particular time. And that's why they're on home exchange. And so they're not interested in just anybody, you know, using their home for guest points because they'd rather rent it out if that's the case for some of these people. But I still have no problem using my guest points as soon as I get them. <laughs> That's exactly what I found, Angie, that it's the people who 
it's really a decision for them between like renting their home out on Airbnb or getting the perfect swap. Um, but like there are plenty of other people who are happy to, you know, go lots of places or are happy to do like, you know, non-reciprocal swaps. Like we haven't had any issues with that either. And even like this summer we're planning um, a big road trip in Europe and we've found plenty of places that use get that will accept guest points. And so, um, like, do you have to be a little bit more flexible than being like, I want this one specific day, day in this tiny town and like mm -hmm. that's the only thing that will work for me? Like, no, that's probably like if that's what you need, then it's probably not the best fit. But if you can be a little bit flexible and are willing to take advantage of free accommodations instead of paying for, you know, a hotel or whatever, then I think it can be a really fantastic option. I think also. Absolutely. There is a way when you're doing a search to search, you can search for secondary homes as a filter. And so those homes might have more availability if you're finding that you're not finding enough homes that are available. And then you have to email out or message out way more people than you can think. So like pretty, you also have to maybe uh, choose the country uh, and then maybe narrow it down to a certain area, but email and message all those homes versus specifically saying, I want to stay in this specific area. And then you might have a little bit more uh, opportunity to have people that will be open to it. Yeah. I, I think on that same note, I noticed somebody asked a question about the biggest challenge for folks. It seems magical, Sarah said, but I'm guessing there are hard parts too. Can you speak to that? I honestly will say like the only hard part that I've ever had is like, or even heard of other people really having is finding the exact swap for the exact dates and exact location that they want. So we've learned as a family, like we actually find our home first and then look at our, you know, airfare and, and dates. Like we change them based on what home we find. We kind of base it off that because not, you know, the perfect place and the perfect time doesn't just always line up. But messaging as many families as you can definitely helps. And I enjoy that process. I like I I'll spend my evenings just scrolling home exchange where other people are scrolling Instagram or whatever. But you I know like, you're <laughs> you know you're a big time user when you spend your nights doing that. There was a period of time where every <laughs> night I was in the bath and I was just responding, but it was like my fun conversation time with people. <laughs> <laughs> no, I enjoy it. But like for example, Hawaii specifically, we have had three successful swaps in Hawaii, so it can be done, but it is harder. People are always like, oh, I'll just go to Hawaii, but everybody wants to go to Hawaii. But what I found is we've gone to places we would have never thought of, and they've been the most magical exchange. So it's not always your top tourist destination that you think of. You're like, you find an amazing home in a, what looks like an incredible destination that you've never even heard of. And you're like, oh, let's go there. That looks awesome. So that happened in Panama for us. We had a super magical swap in Panama. Panama wasn't even on my radar until I found that home swap. So I will say too, though, that even in like some bigger cities or more popular areas, like there are still plenty of opportunities available. Like two of our favorite swaps were in France. One was in the heart of Paris um, during the summer for a month long exchange. And it was amazing. Um, and then another one we did um, in Strasbourg, France during December, like in the middle of Christmas market season when it was like, you know, super busy. So it can be done there also like it might take a little bit of flexibility or planning like the one in Strasbourg was 20 minutes outside of the city so it required like getting there but I mean that was worth it to have like this amazing home that we could stay in. And Absolutely. I, also sorry we're all jumping in but I love this uh, going back to the guest points I think the way you introduce yourself is also really really important because I have I have personally seen people reach out to me and with a very short cold message, can you host us for guest points? And I'm like, what? Like home exchange is not, you know, a transactional platform. It's a platform where you get to know each other. And then, you know, personally, when I reach out to someone, I always offer, hey, we can provide guest points or we could host you later on uh, if you're interested. And I think that makes a big difference is the mentality of like when you sign up for a home exchange, you have to be willing to host and 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 all of that. And I think that makes a, a difference too. Going back to my questions, but I just wanted to add that. No, that was great. That was great. Another question too that comes up, people ask, so when you're entering your home on home exchange, how is your home valued in guest points? So it's, it's valued based off an algorithm that home exchange has um, based on the number of beds, 
the location of your homes, if you have certain amenities, whether that's a pool, backyard, et cetera, it will then, the algorithm will give you a range of how much guest points per night. You can then make some adjustments if you feel it's valued a little more um, without exceeding the maximum value allotted from the algorithm. Um, but that is basically how um, guest points, how, how they're determined by your home. I don't know if anyone has a comment there, but. And then also what assurances does the annual membership provide? So cancellation. Yeah, please. Can I just touch on your previous screen? Um, yes. That is such a beautiful thing because when you go based on number of beds, a lot of times people ask me, um, oh, well, my place isn't good enough or I'll be visiting a friend. I'll be like, you guys should be on home exchange. Like, why aren't you on home exchange? And they'll be like, oh, well, our, our little like cottage or whatever they want to call it is too small. And I'll be like, but it doesn't matter. It's the amount of beds that you have. And you can exchange that for a, maybe a tiny little apartment in downtown Paris and versus a big, huge home in Canada or New Zealand, you know, and it doesn't matter the size and, and the what it is, apartment, cottage, uh, everything. Um, and it kind of ties into Scott's uh, question about a vacation rental. You can absolutely do that and you'll travel for the rest of your life for free because you have so many more options to receive points, right? And so it's just absolutely amazing. And the way that that is done is so beautiful because you're not you're not outlaying a huge amount of um, guest points, if you will, or money um, for a big home versus, you know, a, a prime location. It really is bed for bed. And I love that about home exchange. I think it's so cool. That's great. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, the, the annual membership does provide certain assurances around cancellation. Um, if some you know, if something falls through last minute um, and nothing can be found, we'll cover an accommodation costs up to 120 a night. If the home doesn't match the description, we'll work with you to find a suitable solution. Um, and if there's any kind of incident, um, you know, such as damage or theft, we do have a $500 deposit system, much like a deductible. Home exchange covers up to $1 million of damages by guests. And you can choose when you're allowing someone to stay in your home, you can only choose, you can kind of filter it to only accept people that are verified members and verified means they uploaded their ID, proof of their you know, electrical bills, et cetera. So um, there's a lot of fantastic assurances to make you feel you know, trusted and safe when you're you know, staying in someone else's home or someone staying in yours. And everyone's reviewed right. and too, so you can be Oh, I was just gonna say you can read everyone's reviews. And so that's an insurance, if you will, as well, because you can see how many they've done and what people say about them. And so, you know, they're legit, right? Absolutely. Great. Well, now I'll let uh, Angie take over and share your experiences. Uh, with yeah. So, I mean, I briefly touched on my introduction. We've been doing it for a while. We love it. Um, I will jump into the benefits of staying at kid friendly homes. And I asked my kids, so I have three boys, they are um, five, eight and 11. We started when my oldest was four. So it's been a while and it's been great. And I asked my kids kind of what were, what are your favorite parts about home exchange or favorite memories of things you remember? And they reminded me of things I totally forgot that I was like, oh yeah, that was great. One of the homes that we stayed at had a zip line in the backyard. That was a big hit. <laughs> so my kids loved that. Another one had an outdoor bathtub, like one of those clawfoot tubs, you know, but you could fill it up outside. And my, my toddler at the time was like, hated bath time, he would have spent all day in that bath outside because he was outside way and it was awesome. So things you don't always think of, um, but they also remembered a home that we stayed in that was local. We're in Central Oregon where it's cold in the winter and we did a local swap um, just like 30 minutes from our house and they had a pool inside their home. And so they were like, what? There's a pool we can swim in the middle of winter in Central Oregon. It was so great. We've done lots of places with pools. They always, they're big, so they love to swim. So that's a big 
big hit with my kids. They also uh, said something that I thought this might be interesting to people because we don't own any pets because we travel so much and they love it when we go to a home that has pets to take care of. <laughs> people are always worried. They're like, but I have pets. I don't know if anyone will want to come to my home. And I'm like, oh, trust me, anyone with kids. Well, we've taken care of a bearded dragon before, fish, dogs, cats, ex you know, chickens. Um, so, and then another thing that they enjoy is when we're in a neighborhood that has other kids, they meet new friends and like kids make friends so easily. And it's just so different than when you're staying at like a hotel or something because you're in a neighborhood. And a lot of times people leave notes about their neighbors, like so-and-so next door is great. And they have two kids, you know? So it's kind of a fun way to meet other families that are local to that area. So that's been a hit more. The more obvious things I think for kid friendly stuff to think about is just like the convenience of having a high chair and a crib and a stroller. If you have little ones, when I'm like, when our kids were little, that was a big deal. That was so helpful to have all of the kid friendly stuff that you need to take care of your kid. You know, there's companies that rent that stuff when you travel because they're like, Oh, you're going to need to rent all this, the gear that you need. <laughs> and so I would just search for, you know, homes that had, baby equipment and kid friendly stuff and message people to ask. So that's really um, convenient. And then just all the new toys and ba a backyard to play. And I mean, I could go on forever about kid friendly stuff, but if you have kids, you understand that having your kids happy is a big deal when you're traveling. And my kids have been thrilled with our home exchanges for sure. So it's a fun way for them. Um, some other things to talk about here. I wanted to share about just some special touches that hosts have done for us. And I think like I mentioned briefly, the first swap with the car swap, when we got to their home, this was a reciprocal exchange. So it was so fun because they were at our house at the same time and we were just messaging each other. I mean, it, it totally felt like a new friend. And um, we got to their house and it was a late night flight. I remember and they left their car at the airport and everything. It was great. And then we got there and they had left us a whole breakfast spread for the morning. They're like, we know you aren't going to have time to go to the grocery store before tomorrow morning. And so we just left you some muffins and cereal and fruit. And we just want to make sure, you know, it's all for you for breakfast in the morning. Please help yourself. And I thought that was so sweet. And then their kids, they had kids the same age as our, our two boys at the time. They each left my kids like a little present from them with their name on it and their, you know, it was one of their own little toys and a little card. Welcome to my room, you know, welcome to my room. Have fun with my Legos, you know, whatever. And it was like, oh, my gosh, this is so much more than just like a place to sleep. It is like an experience of meeting other people that really have this open heart and open mind, just the concept of like friendly people that want to share their life with you. So um, they gave us so many tips that first swap and lots of swaps. They give us so many tips of local places to go, their favorite kid friendly hikes, their favorite restaurants, you know, just all the things in the area that are great that you get from a local. Um, so that was super, super special. People have left us, um, you know, local coffee and uh, local guidebooks, or even I love it at our if somebody comes to our house, somebody brought us a book from their location in a different country, you know, it's like a travel book of their area, which was really fun for me to flip through and see where they were from. So um, we had a family that took us on a hike once and it was like so fun to get to know that family on this fun hike with our kids. So just some exchanges where they really went above and beyond to just do something special. We've um, I mentioned the one that we had dinner with that family in New Zealand. That was really really sweet. So I think I will say oftentimes that um, home exchange has like restored my hope in humanity. <clears throat> like there are actually <clears throat> really good people in the world. And I think this community in specific is just full of them. They're not hard to find in this community. I think people really um, once I think that first swap for us, once that was done for us, we were like, oh, wow, like we feel so special and we want to extend that. We want to teach our kids how to extend that to other people too. And so my kids, they, if there are kids coming, they want to know their name, their age, and they want to leave them a special present and they want to write them a little card. And so it's just such a fun um, community, I would say. Uh, and then the last thing I want to touch on too, is just trusting people to stay in your home, kind of how to attract people. Um, I think one thing I'll say when you're getting your profile set up, a picture's worth a thousand words. Like really take a minute <laughs> to, to take some good pictures and good light. I'll go on, on looking and I'll see like these pictures that were taken at nighttime, you know, of their house. And I can't really see the details or they'll have like three photos. And I'm like, 
it really does matter. We, we do want to see like where we're going and what it's going to be like. So you know what to expect. So I think taking some good pictures of your home it just can be on an iPhone, you know, and it's easy to lighten them up or whatever if you need to. But um, but I think that helps and kind of having photos of every every area and stuff so people know. And then also it's really helpful to have photos, just pull them off Google of like the area because people are looking at your house from other countries and they have no idea what Central Oregon looks like. And so, you know, I'll pull up some of our tourist area, you know, the, the best lake and the best hike and whatever downtown. <clears throat> so people can kind of see what does it look like where you're at? Because when I'm searching for homes, I sometimes have no idea what the area is actually like. And so a good description of your community as well. Um, I think trusting people to stay at your home, it really helps to do a lot of communication ahead of time. And we often will Zoom with the family too and like chat like this. So we feel like we get to know them and that's a great way, I think. Um, so that, that helps to build that trust. Um, and then as far as preparing your home, um, we like to... You know, I, I tell people, people know you live there, so you don't need to like put your stuff away. You don't need to put family photos away or, you know, do any of that. Like people are expecting that. But it is nice to get things a little bit organized. If you can, it's motivated me to organize certain drawers in my home and such. It's nice, but not required. Um, but I do think like trying to create a little bit of space for them, depending on how long they're going to be there. If you can clear a closet for them to hang their clothes or a drawer in the, in the you know, um, for them to put their clothes away or a little bit of space in the fridge or try to clean out a shelf in the fridge, you know, that kind of thing really helps them. Um, and then I love to, when I go to home exchange at home, I love reading through their welcome book. It helps me feel like I can know how to take care of their home the very best. And also what the area is like, what are some great suggestions that they have? So we have a welcome book and I try to like pull menus from local restaurants when I'm out and about or different like activities or for your area and just keep my have like sleeves for a binder and just keep that kind of stuff as long as, as well as directions about how to care for our hot tub or our fireplace or whatever. So I think that is, is helpful. And then we do lock, people always ask, do you lock up your stuff? We lock my walk-in closet, which is already where I keep like our tax papers and stuff like that. So a lot of our, you know, personal stuff is in my walk-in closet. So that was an easy thing for us to do. We also currently lock our garage. We don't always, but it's a complete disaster right now. <laughs> so I'm like more like, ah, we'll just have that be the catch-all. We'll throw stuff in there and lock it up. But we do leave out bikes and things for people. And so, um, yeah, anyway, it's, we don't know. Some people don't lock their garage, but we just have it as a catch-all right now. So that's really the only thing that we kind of secure in terms of valuables but yeah wonderful thank you so much that was so great i was going to say uh, one more thing i thought of when you're yeah. reaching out yeah. to find people to come to your home there is a reverse yeah. search that i don't think people know about on home exchange all the time so you can search for people who want to come to your area and that's pretty nice i'll search both the state and the city um, and I found a lot of swaps that way, even if like, we're going to be gone and we just want to get some guest points while we're gone, I'll message all the people that are interested in coming to our area and see if anyone wants those dates. So that's another way to attract more people to your home. Great tip. Thanks. Wonderful. Thank you. Thanks so much, Angie. And now I'd love to introduce Preeti of Local Passport Family to share her experiences with home exchange. Hello. Hello. So I wanted to talk a little bit about kind of the cost effectiveness of home exchange. Um, again, we have six little children. Our oldest is 13 and our baby is one and a half. And we started doing home exchange. I think our oldest was seven, I want to say. So um, it's been a little while and it has just been wonderful for helping us be able to travel, to be able to afford to travel, a little, you know, more than we would otherwise, because we are not paying for expensive accommodations. So um, especially when you have kids, I feel like we need a little bit more space. And so we like to have a place that has, you know, maybe a door where we can close that our kids can sleep in at night without us all having to you know, go to bed at the same time. And usually that just is more expensive to be able to do that. And so home exchange really has made that possible. Um, we've stayed in places that um, have like kid bedrooms that have bunk beds that have toys and stuffed animals. Like um, the, you can see in that picture on the right, my boys were super excited. They have like 
ping pong all set up. And so they were um, just delighted to be able to play. And they had these giant stuffed animals that they had set out for our kids. Um, so my little four-year-old, she's cuddling this giraffe that was about twice her height um, as she went to bed that night. Um, so just fun little touches like that, that not only make it more cost effective, but also make it a much more personal homey experience that help our kids transition more easily um, and really help it feel like they can settle into a home instead of having kind of, there's some stresses always, I feel like with staying in a hotel, um, especially if they don't have connecting rooms or things like that. And so um, this definitely makes it a little bit easier in that way as well. And then um, just touching on how to make everything really upfront, I feel like just having super clear communication over communicating is always going to be better than under communicating. Um, I remember the first exchange that we did, it was in Paris, it was that month long exchange that I mentioned. And we emailed back and forth probably like two dozen times before we actually did the exchange. And it was so smooth and wonderful. Like this other family, they had two little kids. So they came to stay at our home in California. Um, and we went to stay in their home in, in the middle of Paris. And it was amazing. Um, and I feel like just by being really clear with everything, um, it was super helpful. There was kind of a funny thing where, so they had a, um, not a goldfish. It was, um, oh, a betta fish that they asked if we could take care of it, which my kids were delighted to be able to do. Cause similarly, we, um, we do not have pets cause we travel too much to be able to take care of pets. So my kids were thrilled that they could, um, you know, be betta fish parents for, um, for a little while. So we took care of this betta fish, um, fed it, probably overfed it, honestly. Um, and it was, you know, happily swimming along when we left. The family came back the day after um, we left. And I guess betta fish, they like change colors or change like stripes or I don't know, something at some point, um, which I did not know. But um, they came back and they were like, so if, you, if the fish died and you got a new one, you should have just told us. And we're like, I'm sorry, what? Like the fish was fine. Like I promised nothing happened to the fish. Um, so then we like, you know, fig they figured it out. They're like, oh, apparently they like change how they look after a certain amount of time and everything was fine. But like, because we had the open communication already set up, like everything was great and fine. And like, there were no issues and we're still in touch with them now, actually. And we were chatting about um, maybe doing an exchange for our home in London now. And so um, I feel like just by being really upfront about all of the needs, like what the home is like, what, how everything is set up, like they were able, they did not have any babies at the time, but they, um, they reach out and they're like, Hey, we have these friends who have a baby. Like, would you like us to get a baby cot for you in a high chair? And like, they had all these things set up, um, just by like, you know, communicating needs and all of that. And so that was really helpful. Um, and with doing those longer exchanges, I feel like, um, again, it just felt like we were really able to settle into the neighborhood. Like we got to know um, some of their friends a little bit, like we had their contact information. They had this whole like booklet that they had set out for us with the different restaurant recommendations and activities. And um, it was just really nice. Like my kids still talk about that trip in particular all the time um, because it felt like we had um, just this really personal kind of experience while we were in Paris. Like it felt like we were living in Paris for a month instead of just visiting Paris for a little bit. And so um, those longer exchanges can be really fun if you're able to carve out the time. Um, and again, just with the cost effectiveness, like to do something that long would have been really difficult if we, um, if we were just paying for a hotel. But because we were able to do an exchange, it worked out really well to be able to do that. Excellent. What a great story. Love it. <laughs> the betta fish story. I'll never forget that one. We still laugh about the betta fish. I love it. So it's such great. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing. Great. And now I'd love to introduce Chantal, who's with Growing Up Without Borders. And Chantal would love for you to share your experiences with Home Exchange. Awesome. Well, I'm right now in a home exchange. <laughs> so there's all kinds of ways to do home exchange. The very first one I did 
uh, was in Mexico and the family hosted us. And I just, I was so new that I thought you always stayed with the family when you do home exchange, but no, um, a lot of times it, it could be more transactional. Like we said, it, it's not always like lots of conversations back and forth. So if, if you're a person that doesn't want to have to socialize with people and you don't want to have to, um, you know, feel like your best buddies with people, there is that option too, just so you guys know, like you, you can just be like, okay, let's do an exchange. And you know, it doesn't have to be all fluffy, although that part is amazing and nice, but not everybody likes that. Like some people prefer it to be more transactional. And so um, just to answer Scott's question as well, I think it was Scott um, or somebody here. Anyway, someone about the calendar, when you're going to look for a home uh, like i was saying before we always do like a wide search and so we'll search like the country and then we'll search the availability but um there is a calendar option that's there which is really cool because there's like four types of uh, color coat coding on the calendar so you can have all the open availabilities that are for guest exchange guest points mm -hmm. or reciprocal exchange or any type of exchange or if it's occupied so it makes it really easy to figure out um, but then when we send our message kind of like Clay Moss was saying we try to make it very personalized so that the person receiving the message doesn't just think it's just like a quick like hey I wanted to exchange and I have guest points like you know tell them who you are where you're from um, a little bit about your story and then I started adding in um, more so about the age of our kids uh, because sometimes if you just say the age of your kids they might think that they can host you because they have a tiny little toddler bed and uh, not realizing that your kids are older or stuff like that so it's good to give them a little bit of an overview and then um, just before it, when we have a lot of conversation going and it's kind of finalized um, at the end when you finalize your exchange you basically pre-approve and then the other person approves it, you get all their details and oftentimes you'll get their phone number. And um, if you're not using WhatsApp, because not all countries really use WhatsApp, but it's really a universal uh, way for people to communicate on text. And if you're maybe at the last minute, you're running late or something happens and you need to reach that person, they might not always see your message on Home Exchange, but they'll receive it faster on a WhatsApp message. So always make sure you get their WhatsApp message. I do strongly suggest doing that. And um, yeah, I mean, we've done them in so many different countries. Um, there's an ability when people are messaging that if they're writing to you in Italian, you have an instant translate on the message system. So you can type in English and then they can instant translate it back. So you can communicate back and forth a whole exchange with people in a different language. It's absolutely amus amazing. Um, one thing is uh, I just absolutely love, just like Pretty and Angie said, like, meeting the friends and the community around Home Exchange has changed our lives. So we had um, a family stay at our place when we were in New Zealand, it was during COVID and we kept in touch on WhatsApp over the years. They were Italians, but living in uh, Belgium. And it just so happened that we were coming through Belgium and we needed a one night stay as well. And they said, come on over. And then we had a really nice meal together. We actually got to like meet them in person. It was just amazing. We've met like lifelong friends that as soon as they know we're coming back through, it's like, make sure you call us and, and have us over. Um, recently, we went through um, Lebanon and then Syria and then into Jordan. And the lady who had the home exchange where we were staying at had just mentioned to us that she worked for the UN. And it was so cool because she threw a whole party for us because she thought this is so cool. So we literally had the United Nations there with people from all over the world and it was so relevant with the conversations that we were having and it was just like a whole um, enlightening experience for our daughters to live through that and speak to some of these people that are in these conflicting countries and get different perspectives so it's like there's just so much more depth to home exchange that people don't realize until they start utilizing it and you never know who you're going to meet like it's just so cool so i can't i mean i can go on and on about it but um yeah that's kind of our experience with it so Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing. Oh my goodness. Well, you know, in kind of recap, you know, who is home exchange really for? Well, here's five reasons. Um, you know, home exchange is for people who are looking for a more affordable way to travel, for people who want to build relationships with like-minded people all around the world, who really want to live like, like, like a local when they travel, and who want to travel in an alternative and more sustainable way, and also finally want to travel more. 
right? So it's just, it's such a wonderful, as you've heard from these stories, such an incredible community of people. Um, and um, I just thank you all for sharing your stories. I do want to touch real quick too. There is something that Home Exchange offers as well. It's called Home Exchange Collection. And this is um, a kind of collection of homes for more kind of uh, luxury, exquisite homes from around the world. Um, so if you have a home that's, you know, considered a luxury home or would like to stay in other luxury homes, um, please just drop a note um, in the chat uh, and we can get back to you with more information. But I just want to mention that we had that option as well. Uh, finally, just wanted to hit on that we do have, if you do decide to become a Home Exchange member, by March 21st, if you use that code March 20, you'll get 20% off of the annual membership, which again is just $220. Um, but at this point, I would love to, we, you know, we have a few more minutes if you guys would like to ask us some questions while we have Angie and Preeti and Chantal on. Yes, Angie. I saw two questions on here that I thought I could answer. Oh, great, quick. please. When somebody asked about the cleaning and I just kind of brushed over cleaning, but I would just say that sometimes I clean my house myself and sometimes I hire a cleaner to do it depending on how busy I am at work that week and such so either can be done and I would say that um every house we've gone to has been plenty clean for us you know it's been that's been fine sometimes we will pay a cleaning fee if we especially especially if we are using guest points they'll say hey I'm gonna hire a professional cleaner are you okay to cover the cost of that we've always been totally fine with that and um, so that is an option. If it's a direct swap, usually either you both pay a fee or neither of you do for a cleaning fee. You know, like we kind of just usually don't ever, I've never had to pay a cleaning fee on a direct swap. But when it's guest points, they might charge the points and ask us to pay a cleaning fee. You don't have to choose to stay at that home then. But that is an option. And if you're hiring a cleaner to do that, that's something that people is pretty common, I would say. Um, so I wanted to mention that. And then the other question I saw, somebody said that their house was just very basic and it was small or tiny kitchen and peeling paint or something like, do I have to live in a nice house to do this? And I would just say, absolutely not. Like we, we have a very everyday normal home that three children live in and it's very lived in, you know, uh, but we also stayed at just regular, you know, normal homes. And I would say, there are some amazing homes on the platform that we have had the privilege of staying at and we're very grateful for, but we are grateful for every exchange. Like we are staying in somebody's home for free and we appreciate that. And I think that it's just a whole different mindset in this community. There's a reciprocal level of like trust and respect and an appreciation. And this community is very appreciative that they get to come into your home and, and stay there. And for free, they realize they are saving a lot of money by not paying for a hotel for a week or two, or you know, even a few nights. Like they are saving a lot of money by not getting an Airbnb. Even if you look at Airbnbs, which is really more equivalent to where we're staying in regular homes, it's expensive. And so I think people think like, oh, nobody's going to want to come to my home. But if you if they need to go to your area and it's free to come there, they would probably want to come to your home. So I think just keep that in mind. And like people always say, nobody comes here, but if there's a hotel in your town, like people come there because they have family there or they, you know, there's lots of different reasons people go. You don't have to live in a touristy area, um, you know, to really benefit, I think. So I just want to say that. I think maybe if I can jump in, I did see a lot of questions around if something goes wrong. I don't know, Angie, Chantal, Pretty, if you have your own stories to share. Um, you know, someone either breaking something during the exchange or hurting themselves during the exchange. I don't know if you've had this situation and we want to share. I've had um, two that it's kind of funny because they happened in the same time. <laughs> we were in New Zealand at somebody's house, not the same family. So we had a different family in our house and we were at using guest points and we were using guest points in somebody's house in New Zealand. And um, our son was like, at the time and he like knocked it over a like vase like a big like maybe it was like 18 inches like vase that broke and I just felt so horrible like I was like oh my goodness you know what how, what are we gonna do like I messaged the family immediately they were so incredibly gracious and they were like you know on our first exchange our kid ran into the um 
glass door of like a sliding glass door and it shattered. They broke a glass door on their very first like exchange that they had. And they said the host was just so incredibly gracious about the whole thing that ever since then, we just extend grace to people. We get it. We have kids, stuff happens, you know, and we still, we like bought them a card and a hundred dollar bill and left it and said, I'm so sorry, please. Like they wouldn't tell us how we could replace it or where we would have happily replaced it and offered. We just, we felt awful, but we still did something. Cause we're just like, we, we want to do something. What can we do? You know, we know this is probably a nice piece for them. So that happened at this probably two days later where I was still on that swap. The people at our house called in there or texted. They're like, I am so sorry, but we spilt wine on your white shag rug that like we had gotten it at Ikea. They didn't know that, but it was like, you know, just a cheap like look like um, for whatever. Anyway, sheepskin kind of rug or whatever. And they're like, we took it to the dry cleaner and it's not coming out. <laughs> We're so sorry. And I just said, you know what? Don't even worry about it. Like my kids mess up stuff at our house all the time. Like this is just part of life. And the cost of that is nothing compared to the amount that we're saving by spending seven weeks in New Zealand on this trip of a lifetime, you know? So I think for us, like those are really the only instances where anything that I can think of that has broken or, oh, actually one more quick story. In Bali, my son did break a chair. He, he leaned back, you know, where I was telling him, don't lean back in your chair. Don't lean back in your chair. And he leaned back and um broke the chair thankfully my parents were with us on that exchange and they have been with us on many exchanges we like to bring my parents along and my dad is a professional woodworker and so we spent a whole day like going around bali finding all the tools that we needed and he repaired the chair and good as new you could never tell that it ever broke so that did happen too so bring along you know a professional woodworker if you have one in the family but no other than that <laughs> can't think of anything bad that's happened. That's great. Uh, I have been seeing some, that's great. I love this, the live, you know, question. And uh, this is so exciting. I've seen some questions around having multiple listings. Um, so this is totally possible. When you create your account, your account is about yourself. And then you have the ability to create multiple listings and you pay the membership fee once. Um, and I think it's important to know because me personally, I have my home listed and I also have a little private room that I've listed as well. Um, and that's different. And the guest points value is different because if you have my entire house, it's more guest points than if you stay just in the in-law area. Um, so that's something possible, but I know there are some people here that have multiple properties. So that's something that you will be able to do. Um, I will share an article right now about it. I think, Carol, you asked about it. Um, so I will share it. And let's see if we have more. Oh, yeah. Uh, international sites. Well, I think like we have the best people here to answer that. Chantal, Angie, Preeti, you've traveled mm -hmm. everywhere and you've traveled to so many destinations with Home Exchange. Um, do you want to maybe talk a bit about I know, Angie, you might have to go. But maybe Chantal, you want to share all the destinations? Yeah. What is the the question? I mean, it's in so many countries, um, everywhere. Um, I will say, like certain countries, you get maybe more value for your money because you might stay in a beautiful mansion um, in one country, and in another country that might be a little less developed. Well, then. It, the home might reflect that as well. And that's just part of it, right? So it's just, you know, but you can see all the different things. Um, to touch back on what you were saying before, if you run into trouble or anything, uh, we did have once where we had to call Home Exchange and they have a special like email, which is their SOS email. If you're in a situation where you get there and it's not what you uh, had or wasn't described or whatever, they right away help you find another exchange and they have the ability to send out a message to everyone and then we were able to find something uh, pretty much right away and, and figure it out but there is that assurance that that's there in case um, something ever does happen but like i said we've done over 100 where we've been to their house and i don't even know how many we've done where people come to our house but we've only had that once and we've done over 100 and so it's been amazing um and we've done them in so many countries. I mean, it's just, uh, it's a world network. How many countries are you guys in anyway? Over 130. 
130. Yeah. So it's definitely very, yeah. very international. And I think for the, I've been rereading the question. I think it's also about the value of the properties, depending on where you live. Um, we have an algorithm that kind of calculates the value of your property based on where you live, the number of uh, beds that you have, and kind of like the size of your home and the amenities. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how it would be managed. But we are in 130 countries and we have 270,000, wait, 270,000 homes around the world. Um, yeah, and then Ingrid's asking about the time swap. So um, there's the different types of swaps. So let's say you're going to be away for one whole month and you find someone who wants to come to your house uh, for a month, then you do a direct swap. But let's say you want to host somebody for one month and you only want to stay for one week at someone else's place, you might ask them for guest points instead. And then you could do four different weeks in four different places if you want, and they can still be staying at your house for maybe only that one month. Um, so it, it could be, um, it's very flexible in that sense. Does that answer for you, Ingrid? I guess you can't talk, you have to type. <laughs> I know. <laughs> is, Clem, is there any last questions? I know it's just one o'clock, so I want to be mindful of people's time. Is there any? And if, um, even if you do have questions, please add it in the questions. We can follow up via email too afterwards. Someone did ask if there will be another live chat anytime soon that they were late to get on here. Mm -hmm. so we can send it to them. Yeah, we do, be, yeah. We, do, we do tend to organize webinars monthly now. That's something new that we've launched, but seeing how great it's been, um, we're trying to do it on a monthly basis. So I will actually share right now in the chat the page where you can see all the webinars, even the past webinars, because our webinars are all recorded and we, you know, leave them on demand, meaning that, you know, but you won't be able to chat live for the on demand one, but you will still be able to see the content of the, of the webinar and all. So I will make sure to share it right now. Um, and then I think we probably it's for it's well for my time, but I know it's one uh, in Pacific South. time, yeah. Pacific time, um, and I just shared the link to the webinars, so you will be able to see past webinars, future webinars, and and all of that. And uh, but it's been great. Thank you, Pretty Chantal, Shannon, um, for being there, and Angie had to to go as well, but. We'll it was great to <laughs> be with you guys. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for sharing and for everyone attending. <laughs> yeah. Bye, Bye, everyone. Okay. Bye. Thank Bye -bye. you. <laughs> Bye.